today's class we are going to start with section 2.4 fundamental theorem of arithmetic so what does the theorem states let us see every positive integer except the number 1 can be represented in exactly one way apart from rearrangement as a product of 1 or more primes so what does the statement states is any positive integer except the number 1 the positive integer can be expressed as a product of 1 or more primes what is a prime number prime number is a number which can be divided only by itself or by 1 and what is a composite number if it is not a prime number then we call it as a composite number let us see more clearly so then the positive integer can be expressed as n and it can be represented as a product of one or more primes and the representation is given as p1 power q1 p2 power q2 p3 power q3 up to pn power qn where in this p1 p2 p3 up to pn are primes and q1 q2 q3 qn are all natural numbers okay i consider a number a positive integer and i i will show you how to express in such a way we will consider the number 3 2 7 6 0 so we will consider the number 32760 we'll express this number in such a format how to do so is we have to factorize the number 32760 only in terms of prime numbers okay so 32760 it can be divided by the first prime number 2 and we'll get it as next again it can be factorized by 2 8 1 9 0 again it can be factorized by 2 4095 cannot be factorized by 2 so we have to choose the next prime number we can choose the number 3 1 times 3 3 times 9 6 times 18 5 times 15 yes so it is factorized by 3 and the number is 1365 again we can factorize this number by 3 1365 3 3 4 times 12 5 times 15 5 times 15 455 the 455 number cannot be factorized by 3 so we have to choose the next prime number of after 3 it can be factorized by 5 so 5 times if it is means 91 and 91 cannot be factorized by 5 we have to choose the next prime number after 5 we can choose the number 7 and it can be 13 so 13 is a prime number 13 1 so i am going to write this in a format p power p1 power q1 p2 power q2 so on so how to write this 2 it has come 3 times so it can be written as 2 cube next number is next prime number that is p2 3 has come two times so we can write it as 3 square the next prime number is 5 and it is one times so 5 power 1 next prime number is 
7 it is also power 1 and the next prime number is 13 it is also power 1. So, what does the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states is every composite number, composite number is nothing but which is not a prime number is called as a composite number. So, every composite number can be written uniquely as a product of power of primes. So, this is what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We chose a composite number. We have factorized using only prime numbers and it can be written in such a format. So, expressing in such a format is called as a fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Uh, in uh, example 2.7, in given factorization, find the numbers m and n. So, they have given a factorization tree and in this we have to find the value of m and n. So, let us begin from the first box which means here we have 5 and 2. So, 5 and 2 will give the value 5 into 2, 10. So, what will be the value will occupy here? 10 will occupy because 5 can be divided as 5 and 2 because the multiplication of 5 and 2 will give us 10. So, similarly, the method I followed here, I will also follow the same here. So, what I did here, I have multiplied 5 and 2, 10. So, what will we do now? We have to multiply these two numbers. 5 into 10 will get 50. Next, what we have to do is, we have to multiply the same process we have to proceed. Next, what we have to do is, we have to multiply these two numbers. 50 into 3 will give us 150. So, this box is also occupied. Next, the same process we have to do it here. 150 into 2 will give me 300. Okay. So, this is how the tree has come. So, the value of m in this problem is 300 and the value of n is equals to 50 for this problem. In example 2.8, what it is given is, can the given number 6 power n, n is a natural number which means it starts with 1, end with the digit 5. We have to check whether the 6 power n ends with digit 5. If yes, we have to give the reason. If no also, we have to give the reason. Let us check whether 6 power n ends with the digit 5 or not. So, how to do that is, 6 power n is given. 6 power n uh, is a 6 is a composite number and it can be expressed as a product of one or more primes by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So, this can be expressed as 2 into 3 by the product of 2 primes e power n and this n is common to both the terms. It can be expressed as 2 power n into 3 power n. Now, these both are the factors of 6 power n where 2 power n is a where 2 is a factor of 6 power n. Therefore, 6 power n is a 6 power n is always even. It has an even factor. Therefore, 6 power n is always even. Whereas, what we have to check is whether the 6 power n can end with 5. If a number ends with 5 means, what does it mean? It is an odd number. If a number ends with 5, then we call that number as an even number. Whereas, 6 power n is always even according to our factorization. Therefore, 6 power n cannot end with the digit 5. So, example 2.9 is we have to check whether the given number is a composite number. If it is so, we have to justify why is it as a composite number. Okay. So, what will I do is this is one term and this is one term. We will consider as such. We have 3 over here. So, I am taking 3 in common. So, the remaining terms in this will be 5 into sorry 7 into 5 into 2 plus 1 we have taken out 3 we have taken outside so remaining only 1 so
So 3 into we will simplify the terms within the bracket 7 5 is 35 35 into 2 70 70 plus 1 3 into 71. So whereas this is a product of two primes according to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic composite number can be expressed as a as a product of power of primes. We have expressed this number as a product of two primes. Therefore, the given number is a composite number. Example 2.10, we have to find the values a and b where these a and b are positive integers such that they have given the format as a power b into b power a which is equals to 800. We have to find the values of a and b. So this is the format we use to find the values of a and b. What shall we do is we will take the value 800, we will factorize it, then we will see what to do. Okay, I am taking 800, I am factorizing it. So we have to uh, choose only the prime numbers to factorize. The first prime number I will choose 2, 400. Again we can choose 2, 200. Again we can choose 2, 100. Again we can choose 200, sorry 50. Again we can choose 25. Now we have to move on to the next prime number. Next prime number is 3. Uh, 3 will not divide 25. Therefore we choose the next prime number 5. So which will divide 800 is factorized in such a format. Now what we are going to do is we are going to write 800 as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 has come 5 times. So 2 power 5 into the next prime number which has come 2 times that is 5 square. So when comparing this factorization with this equation given in the question, if we compare so 800 equals to a power b into b power a. In the value of a, that is in the place of a, we have the value as 2. So, a equals to 2. In place of b, we have the value as 5. So, b equals to 5. So, we have found out the values of a and b.